Hi and welcome to another tutorial. In this one you will learn about Next.js server actions. So you will learn how to add new tasks to our to-do list using Next.js server actions. You will see how they are simple but yet very powerful. So let's see them in the action. Go with Sloba. Okay, before proceeding and implementing our to-do form, what I want to do first is I want to clean up our database. So make sure that you have Prisma Studio running and let's open up all the tasks that we have. So I will just use this bulk menu and I will delete all the records that we have. So let's delete them. And now we have empty database. So I can close the tasks. And if we refresh our to-do list, we can see that we don't have any tasks to show. Nice. VS Code, I wanna open up to-do form.jsx. So the file that we have created in the previous tutorial. And let me close the app folder and let me close the explorer. So first let's build a form here and then we can discuss how we can create server actions. Inside of our to-do form, component here let's remove this div and we need to create a form and we're going to be using a browser api and built-in event handler of action to submit our form so this is nothing specific to next.js but this is something that you can use in your regular react applications so later on we will provide a name of the function that we want to call once we submit our form so inside of our form let's add a div which will be a wrapper div and let's add some classes to our div. So let's add a class name and we're going to be using daisy classes. So let's add a join, which is a container. And let's add a full width and let's add some margin on the bottom as eight. So now we want to add some items that are a child to this container. And this daisy UI will add some nice styles to them. So let's create an input. And this is going to be an input where we're going to define the name of our tasks. So let's add a type of this input. And type of this input is a text. Let's add some classes to make this input nicer. So let's add input, input dash bordered so that it has a border around it. Let's add the join item. So this means that this is a child of join wrapper. And let's add width full. So this means that this input is going to take the full width, but apart from the button that is next to it. Next, let's add a placeholder. And here we can say type here. Next is the name. And we need to provide a name to our inputs when we use the form action here so that we can get the values of our input fields from our form. In this case, we can add a name of content. So this can be whatever you want. And let's add required attributes. So this means that we absolutely need to fill in this input before submitting our form. Next to this input, let's add a button. And this is going to be a submit button. So when you click on this button, it's going to submit the entire form. So let's add a type of submit. And for the text, let's say create task and we can remove the space at the beginning and let's add some classes to make this button a little bit more nicer so let's add a button button dash primary and join dash item so once again this indicates that this is a child element of the join container and now what i will do i will just remove this action here so that we can save and preview what kind of form we get because this will try an error because we are not providing any function here so let me zoom out and let me check what we have in the browser. So as you can see, we have this nice type here, input, and we have this create task button. Okay, let's get back and create our server actions. There are a couple of things that you need to be aware of when you're creating server actions. First of all, if you wanna create a server action inside of a server component, then you can do this inside of the same file. If you wanna use a server action inside of a client component, it means that you need to define your server actions in a separate file and then just import it inside of the client component. Now let's create our server action and let's name it as const create task. There are two things that you need to be aware of apart from location where you define your server actions. So the first one is that server actions needs to be asynchronous and we just create our fat arrow function. And the other specific thing about server action is that you need to define a specific directive on top. So use server. So just to repeat one more time, server actions needs to be asynchronous and they need to use directive use server on top. So what we need inside of our server action is the actual value of this input. But how we can pass this value is using the action event handler. This is a built-in event handler from browser API, as I mentioned previously. So we can use the action and we can just call the function that we just created. So server action, create task. And now we have access to this form using the browser API and we can name this one as form data. Now we need to use the get function from the form data and we need to provide a name of the field that we want to access the value from. So in this case, the value of the name property is the content. So we can access the value of this input using the content keyword. So let's type in content 
and let's just test if this works so let's just console log this console log and let's open the terminal so once again this is running on the server so this is the beauty of server actions so if you open up a terminal and let's head over to our page and we need to refresh our page here and let's type in something test or age whatever we want to type and if you go back to our visual studio code we can see that we have this age the value that we have entered inside of our uh, input field so here you can see the real beauty of server actions because this actually runs on the server usually how you perform these kind of actions is you have the application which communicates with the server sending some api request and then server handles that api request connects to the database returns data back and then sends that data back to the client or the application and now we have the value of our input field and we can use this value to create a new task inside of our database so we have learned in the previous tutorial how we can use prisma to do this so let's store this value inside of a variable and we can remove this log so let's create a new variable and let's name it as content and now what we can do is we can import the prisma the one that we used in the previous tutorials from utils for slash db and we can call the namespace task and we can call create method and inside of this create method we need to provide a data attribute and inside of this data we want to provide a content so the value that we have picked up from the input field and this is asynchronous action so let's wait for it and now we can save this file and let's go to our browser to test and see what we got so if we go and let's refresh our page here there's no tasks to show but let's say that we want to add by milk task and if we create this task you're not going to see any changes here but if you go to prisma studio and if you go to all tasks you can see that we have this buy milk new record created but you must be asking why in the heck we don't see any changes here the reason for that is because these pages are static as you know we are using the server components here this is not a client component so any changes that you make to a database it's not being reflected right off the bat so you need to tell next.js to refresh your page so how we do that is very simply we just call a function called revalidate path and we want to provide a name of the path that we want to revalidate so let's call to do dash list so this is the name of the path that you want to revalidate let's save this and once again let's head over to our browser now let's refresh the page and let's try to add some new tasks so let's say buy banana and let's create a task and now as you can see the path is getting revalidated and we are getting new tasks added to our list and this is all for this tutorial in this one we have seen how we can create server actions i hope you enjoyed it and i see you guys in the next tutorial and if you want to support my channel and get a full source code of every single video that i'm doing feel free to check out patreon.com code with Sloba to get full access. See you there. Well, that's all for this video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more videos like this, click here.